How we doing, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Getting Jiggy With It. I'm Will. I'm just, I forgot my own name there for a minute. Uh, and today we're going to be doing another painting tutorial, this time since the Title Blades, or at least the Title Blades Part 2 is out. Uh, we did get our deluxe edition. I figured we need to find a way to paint these quickly so that way we can get it played on the channel for you guys. And so I got some Army Painter Speed Paints and I wanted to try, I guess what you would call a sun drop type techniques. Basically it's just using a wash with a little bit of dry brushing to give it a little bit more detail. And that way you're not playing with the standard gray plastic on your game board. With that said, let me go ahead and get the camera switched over and we'll go through a couple of the steps. I painted all of them except for one, the one that I'm gonna be painting here on the channel. Uh, so yeah, let me go ahead and get the camera switched over. All right, there we go. There is our mini chore. So of course, uh, I don't know his name. I'd, I could pull the book out and look again, uh, but it's the big alligator guy. So we're gonna be painting him. He was the biggest one, so I figured he had the best chance of showing the detail. Uh, but I will show you the other minis that we did to kind of give you an example of what we're doing. We're not only gonna paint him, but I'm also gonna show you the technique I'm doing on the little uh, bust, the little mover for your uh, leadership board. I wanted to do kind of like a stone technique, but keep with their colors. Uh, but here we go. So this is what we're going after. Uh, as you can tell, I went with the, you can do this one of two ways, right? You could either do the characters, their color, and then do the dry brushing, highlighting it, and even do the bases in their color. Um, I decided to go with their primary color, basically. Uh, with him, it's he's got like this blue, blue green with his uh, mohawk and his and his little, uh, I guess, fins here on the, on the arms. So what we do is we put the, we're gonna use the army painter uh, and then we're going to dry brush. Uh, so that's the first one. And then this of course is, uh, as I mentioned, what we're gonna be going for uh, in terms of that kind of like a stone look, right? But it's still got their player color. So that's what we're going for. We'll show all of the uh, characters that are back here in the background uh, at the end, uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So what we're using, uh, is the Army Painter, uh, their new speed paint line. I got the basic set because I'm figuring for most part, you're only gonna have like five, maybe six colors, you know, in a game that you're gonna have to, if you're gonna do an entire army, even something like, um, I've got Rising Sun in there. I'm thinking, do I wanna really do the detail in the Rising Sun, do I not? So even with those, you'd be able to pretty much just do each army in a different color and you'll be able to you know, accomplish this same look uh, because there's a green, there's a red, there's a blue. I mean, there's a gray, which I think comes out almost like a black. Uh, there's a dark purple. Now, the one thing I can say is a lot of the colors are dark. They're a little bit harder to mix than you know if you're doing your standard acrylic paints. Um, so what I've, I've kind of gotten some mixing done, but I think if you do this edge highlighting with the dry brushing at the very end, I think you can then tone the characters towards the color shade you want uh, because you can go a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter on that uh, dry brushing. But so of course the first color we're gonna need for him is the blood red. So we're going to go ahead and these are nice. You probably hear it. It's got a little uh, ball bearing already in it. So you wanna shake them up real good. Um, these of course are already shaking because I've been doing it. I would put it in this little pot here, but unfortunately that is a mixed color uh, that we use for one of the characters because I wanted us, I didn't want everybody, you know, the same red. So it, a little bit goes a long way. I think most of these figures, five drops has been more than enough. If you notice, I got some extra. He's a little bit bigger guy, so I might go for maybe about six drops or so. I, I went for 11. I went for, <laughs> I lied. I went for 11 drops. Um, brush wise, you, it's gonna come with, if you buy the starter set, the little thing, it's gonna come with this one. This brush is working fine. It doesn't have a fine point, so it is good for like slopping the paint on there. These little trays you can actually pick up at the dollar store. Um, it was like a pack of six, I'll do went and picked them up for me. Uh, and that's what you wanna put them in. You don't wanna put them in your wet palette. In my last video, I showed you guys, you know, a wet palette. We'll be using this for like the bases and stuff like we always do, but you don't wanna put your uh, dry brush paint or this paint on a wet palette because it will dilute it and kind of break down the uh, compound, however this stuff is made. Uh, so here we go. Uh, and ex ignore the, the table. The table, of course, we uh, have a trash bag that we ripped open and we use this as our painting cloth so we don't damage our Jasper table. But it's as simple as dab it in there, getting it, and just slopping it in there, right? So as you're doing it, you kind of want to work quick, but not, you know, you don't have to work too quick. It does stay wet for a good workable time. 
which is nice because if say, oh, this is getting too, too much in there, you can kind of see, so you can grab it out. It'll continue to pull as it starts to set uh, into the uh, cracks and the crevices here. So I was looking underneath, so I apologize if that wasn't in focus for you guys. Uh, but yeah, you're just basically gonna keep slapping it on uh, as you go. You wanna try to keep your brush smooth and clean. I did all of them. I didn't see much in the way of like a, I don't wanna say pooling, but too much of a color change or like a, uh, a coffee staining, I think is a term. Uh, one other thing to note, I didn't actually prime these. I did every single one of them to the raw plastic because I wanted to see if this would work. Because I'm like, worst case scenario, it doesn't work. I've got to prime them anyways. And then we, we would be able to paint over them and do a full paint. But these are working pretty good. I will tell you, I did wash them. Uh, it was, uh, I guess it's got some chemical that's still on them from the manufacturing process that uh, is kind of like oily. So you do want to wash them in some uh, Dawn or something like that that can uh, remove the oil. Uh, but then after that, I had no problem. As you can see here, it goes right on. Now we are going to, of course, varnish these after. And that's one thing with these speed paints. If you watch some videos about it, they do reactivate pretty easily. So you are going to want to make sure that you varnish these. That way they can um, hold the paint, right? It doesn't come off if it gets wet. So I'm going to go ahead and finish him up. Once I finish him up, I will... Uh, gonna have to let them dry so I'll, I'll figure out how long it takes to dry and then i'll be back to show you guys how to do the uh dry brush highlights so we'll be right back all right guys we're back so he's not quite dry yet it's, it's only been about a minute or two so we're going to see how long it takes him to dry but you can see here uh there are some areas where he's still pulling up a little bit more than i'd like so all you got to do is just kind of come in here grab that extra off wipe it off on a napkin right or a paper towel or whatever you're using you know when you normally clean your brush uh just to kind of get some of that extra off um, but it does get into all the crevices. It gets in here pretty good, um, highlights all of the details. Um, but what we're going to do now is rather than wasting time while we're waiting for him to dry, I'm going to sit him off here and we'll go ahead and go after um, his little uh, bust here. Uh, and the way that I've been doing these, well, let me got to take him off, which may be more entertaining than I want it to be. Um, forgot part of his toes. Don't forget his toes. All right, let's see if I can get him off without too much hassle. Maybe I go from his toes because if I get underneath of him, I can always paint that over. Uh, and that's the other thing, right? You can always paint over if you mess up. Uh, I thought I'd, I thought I was going to get his tail there, but I did not. I did pretty good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do his uh, bust here. So the way I've been doing this is dry brushing it with the color that they are and then dry brush it with a wolf's gray. Um, so of course, he's going to be dark blue. That's going to be his base. So I've got a heavy blue here that I'm going to use. And we're gonna move this palette out the way. And what I've really been using is the top of my um, Stay Wet palette. You wanna use some kind of plastic thing. I mean, you could use a paper plate. You could use, honestly, I could use those little things as well. I don't know why I didn't start that way. But as you can tell, I kind of go around and circle a little bit after I've got some of the paint out. Now this is not going to stay wet like it would if it's on your wet palette. And you don't want it to stay wet, right? Your brush can be a little bit wet, uh, damp, but you're really, you're doing exactly what it says, right? You're dry brushing. So you're gonna put dry paint on him uh, to give him those colors. So what I've got here is just like a damp little um, paper towel. You don't, even though the term is dry brushing, I was watching Artist Opus, they said you don't want it to be completely dry. They usually have a sponge, uh, but I've got this wet napkin because it's what I use when I wash my brushes. But you're basically just gonna come over here you're gonna dab in here a little bit, try to get as much off as you can, which is why you probably wanna have like a paper plate or something, because this would take a long, long time. And then you basically, until you get off as much, really as much as you want, yeah, right? Because since I actually want these guys to be a little bit colored, I'm leaving some of it on there, but not a lot. And you can either do it like a swiping motion, you can do a dabbing motion. It's really for whatever effect you are going for. I want some of this color to show through. So I don't want that to happen, but <laughs> I want some of the color to show through. So I'm going a little bit uh, heavy handed and that, that comes from the experience from the other ones that I've done, right? I've found that like if I don't do heavy enough, when I put the Wolf's Gray on, it actually kind of dilutes it so much that you can't even tell that it was a dark blue, right? I'm not getting quite that color that I want, right? So I try to grab a couple, couple high spots 
Uh, and then because of the way I do this, his base is going to need a little bit as well. I usually make the base just have a little bit darker um, down here on the bottom. But it's just basically, you know, dry brushing it in there. And that's probably, you know, for highlight dry brushing, that's probably a little bit too much, which you'll see when I do uh, the main mini. But for what I'm trying to accomplish here, this gives it that stone look that I'm going for. Uh, so then I'm just going to rinse this out. And just a little bit of water. And you kind of keep dabbing until you don't see any more blue in this case right do some swirls now this is a makeup brush it is very common a lot of people use makeup brushes uh i can't say what this pack was i think i already got it uh through the mail for some reason um, but you can pick these up at the dollar store probably a whole pack of uh makeup brushes like little little fuzzy fluffy brushes like this uh from the dollar store probably a five pack ten pack who knows uh, so yeah, just pick one of those up and they seem to work great. Uh, works a lot better than you damaging your good brushes by, you know, ruffling the, the uh, bristles against it, right? And damaging your good brush. So here is my uh, Wolf Gray. So this is what we're going to use for the um, highlight kind of rock look off of it. So it's supposed to look kind of like some of the paint has come off. So we've got the darker gray here that was original color, added my dark blue, and then same thing I'm going to dab my uh, brush there and then same thing and do that until it gets rid of it and then I'm just going to kind of same thing just do try to get some of the more the edge sections uh, highlight a little bit more with this right oops that might have been a little too much on his nose but again you can always you know wipe it off right so I can go like that and that actually helps too because that's going to give it more of that uh, worn look that I'm that I'm going for right for this so just a little bit of dabs here and there a little bit under there and you know for the most part I feel like that looks like stone right so I feel like you know that kind of looks like it was painted at one point and it's starting to wear away and then compared to you know the other one that I did you know very comparable he's got a little bit more on his nose there but so be it uh, he is a little bit naked up underneath there so maybe I want to grab a little bit more of the blue and you know get some of that off of there and then just kind of maybe go underneath like that just to tidy that up a little bit more there you go so there we go that is that so we're going to uh wait for the other guy to dry and i will be right back all right so we're back in and basically it's been about 10 minutes um it, he's a little tacky but he's not wet any longer so i'm gonna try this um normally you're gonna be doing them in a assembly line fashion right you'll do each one of your minis and you'll put the base color on them. So while those are drying, then you know you have you do the next one, right? And then you can come back and do the dry brushing, and you guarantee that the first one's dry. You know, for example, he would have been probably the first one I want to do because he's so big, right? But what we're going to go ahead and do is do the dry brushing. So same way we did last time, going to use our handy dandy makeup brush here. Now I did make a mix color. I'm not sure if this is exactly the color I want because it's not really bright enough. Um, but I didn't want him to be straight red, which he is now, and I didn't want him to go down as low as um, the other one here because she also is a red, but she's more of a pink. So I kind of mixed a little bit of magenta with reds. So we'll see how that uh, highlights it. If it doesn't highlight enough, then I might go straight magenta, but I wasn't, I wasn't daring enough to go straight magenta right off the, uh, right off the bat. So same thing. We're going to get off as much as we can. And then we're just going to dry brush and have it hit all of the highlight areas. And again, same as if you don't feel like it's getting enough uh, on it, you can always, you know, load up your brush a little bit more. Don't take off as much uh, that you did last time. And same, you want to hit like highlights, like muscles, fingers, things that it, things that would be highlighted, right? Just to give it a little bit more depth. I mean, the the speed paint does a really good job of hitting and getting the highlights on its own. But if you probably can already tell just from watching this, right, just by this little bit that I'm doing here, it's really starting to pop up those other highlights that weren't there before, right? So it's really catching all the edges that were pretty much the same color as any other um, spot, right? All the red was kind of blending together. So, we're just going to keep going through this and then I will be back with the final product. 
All right, so we are back. So he wasn't quite dry. I'd probably recommend, yeah, definitely don't do 10 minutes. Probably go at least 15, maybe even closer to 20. So like I said, if you're doing a batch and you're doing a whole bunch of minis, you can just go in order and then go back and start before you do your dry brushing. But here we go. I did have to lighten it up again. Um, I'm not even sure if it's, if it's showing well enough on the camera, but I didn't like how the first color was. So I went straight magenta. That still didn't do it. So I did kind of a mix of magenta, pink, and red. Uh, to kind of get the highlight a little bit more. Um, I can see it in person. Again, I don't know if the camera is really picking it up well, but here is the uh, final result. I did to go ahead and paint the base, the heavy blue, because you know that's his color, which that is in the wrong one. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go over the rest of the minis. Uh, so we already went over these two, but we'll go ahead and show them again uh, side by side. Um, I really like, I like the way the green came out. Now this was two dry brushes. So that's something else you might need to do is a second dry brush if you really want that second color uh, to come out good. Uh, here is the frog guy. Uh, so with him, it is the green, and then I use the uh, electric, the really bright green from WizKids, uh, livery green. Um, I was going to use goblin green, but I figured it wouldn't show up enough. Uh, this, I think, shows up well enough. Again, it may need an, a second, but I, I, I think it hit most of the... Uh, highlights well enough. Uh, and then the next one kind of already previewed her. Uh, so she was the red. She was the same red that you saw on him. The only thing I did was I mixed it with 50-50, uh, whoops, 50-50 with the uh, Crusader skin to kind of lighten it up because this comes off kind of like a brown pink a little bit. Uh, so I figured if I, if I mix it together, uh, but there is her bust and then there is her mini. So like I said, some areas don't have anything, but then some areas, you know, lots of paint. Uh, she, I had to do twice because when I put one the color the first time, I was a little bit heavy handed and there was way too much paint going on. This one, Audrey do saw, and she really likes the way this one came out. This one, I think really did come out well. Um, so her bust there. And then with her, it was just straight uh, Crusader skin, I believe is what I used uh, as the base. And then I went ahead and just did the dry brush was with uh, khaki and that's how we came out with that one with the uh, little with with this one it was um a mixture of no she was straight pink she was straight pink for the dry brushing uh and then the judge here so in the book right he's kind of like a blue green but again this is a more limited palette if you want to be able to do this and really match the colors you will have to get the bigger set uh which i think is coming out into this month or maybe in April, I can't remember. Uh, but then there is his bust. Um, but with him, same thing, I went the blue, the same blue. So this is a good example of how the mini can look completely different just based on the dry brushing, right? So I did the blue for him and then I did a mix of electric blue. Yeah, I did the electric blue and I did the glacier blue. Cause I tried, the, I, was, I was gonna go glacier, but I'm like, I was thinking that was gonna be way too highlighted. Um, so this is how he came out. I think he was a little bit still wet as well when I did him, which can actually kind of come out to your favor because I think this isn't as much the just dry brush. I think some of the um, speed paint came off a little bit, but I think he looks good. Uh, and then the last thing I did was I went ahead and used the speed paint on the coin. Uh, this is the, of course, deluxe edition coin to give it kind of a, a gem like. So that's one thing I see a lot of people doing with the speed paints is using like a metallic paint underneath just to see how you can get that to pop. All right, there we go, guys. That is a small little tutorial. I hope you guys find that helpful. Hope you find that is a incentive to go out and paint. Uh, it gives you a good way to save a lot of money because if you do the sun drop type technique or the wash technique, um, everybody's got a different name for it. Those usually add a couple hundred dollars to your Kickstarter campaign at the end of the day. Uh, doing this, you just gotta buy some paints some brushes and honestly don't even have to technically buy brushes just give you one in the starter kit and you can just slop the paint on it uh, you can go a little bit step further so for example if i wanted to if i really wanted to like beat this guy up i could like paint his weapon like silver just so it pops go through all of them paint one thing on them uh, to pop i didn't do that because he's not holding a weapon so it'd be like well what would i paint him and then on the the big alligator guy that we painted today to do him, I would have had to, like, really his armor. I mean, that's really all he's got that's silver. So I was like, uh, my OCD wouldn't allow that. So I didn't go ahead and do that. But 
If you guys want to watch more of these painting tutorials, let me know down in the comments what kind you would like to see. I do have like a little primer thing I want to do where I'm using different types of primers to see if I can get some different techniques that again are very quick and very easy so you don't have to spend so much time painting and you spend more time playing, right? Uh, with that said, guys, with that said, guys, hope you guys enjoy this video. Until next time, peace.